Okay, we're gonna try to do this seascape scene uh, with pastel and paper. We still have a lighthouse and some houses and a sailboat in the water. And today you're gonna need a piece of paper. Piece of white paper. Please excuse the dust around my space here. I had already done this picture once and had trouble with the recording, so we're gonna try it again. And you're gonna need a pencil and some pastels or crayons and some q-tips and maybe a rag or paper towel to wipe your hands on. So first we're going to start by mapping out our picture with a pencil. <clears throat> Excuse me. I was looking at Edward Hopper's uh, The Long Leg picture painting that he painted in 1935. He used oil painting, but I thought we would do it with pastel for fun. Okay, so let's begin. We first, <coughs> excuse me, need to map out our sky versus our land. And this picture is pretty well balanced because it's almost in half. So we're going to kind of make a little, using our pencil, make a little sort of squiggly line. This will be like the dark dunes and grass behind. That's a little bit crazy there. Okay, and then we're going to put our lighthouse here. This is sort of like a, well, it sort of reminds me of like a trapezoid, actually. So just do some light penciling, and then on the top it has this lighthouse portion. So you can do like a little triangle, and then there's a little thing on the top. I might have made it a little bit long. And then over here we have, well, I might change that. Let me see here. Do you ever make mistakes? I make mistakes all the time. Let's draw this shape and then go ahead and draw the back part or the side part of this lighthouse. And then the top part, sets on the top like this. It has kind of a rounded top like a cylinder and then the roof goes up like this and these will have like sides on them like three panels okay this will have some windows on it but we're not going to do that now let's go ahead and do about right here we're going to do kind of a roof piece that comes down and then there's another side of the house the gable that comes kind of behind that piece like another rectangle and I'm going to go straight down from the corners and this roof connects to another roof that goes like this so we really have a series of like boxes and triangles and rectangles that we just connect together to create this house part of the lighthouse. Okay, so we can go in and you can erase some of those lines. You don't want to draw really hard because when you go to do your pastelling, sometimes it creates like a well that uh, the color won't sink into you have to kind of scrub it in so be careful when you're drawing to be very light and then these houses also have some chimneys on them and I will tell you right now I have a neighbor who is very loud and sings a lot and we have construction going on nearby so there's probably going to be a lot of noise and my daughter is doing her e-learning and the 
space behind me so there may be some extra noises today from different things don't worry a thing about it we have to go on with our lives I actually contemplated doing this outside today but it was so windy that I was afraid my easel would float away okay so we've got these hills and this lighthouse and now we need to have like our sand berm a berm is like a mound so this is like where the dunes come down. We're going to draw just kind of a straightish kind of line. And that's going to show where the sand hits the water. Okay. Remembering to keep it nice and light. Light stroke. Okay. So now we got to do our sailboat. Our sailboat is going to be right in here. And it has two sails. And then, of course, the boat part. So it's kind of leaning because the wind is blowing. Um, and so we're going to try to make that look that way using shading and value. So we're going to start right here. And we're going to come and we're going to bring kind of a line down this way. It's going to cut right below the place where our water begins and our sand connect right here. Okay, so then we're going to go straight over. It's sort of like a triangle, but it's rounded because the wind is blowing into it. So it's really just, oops, sorry. It's really just a triangle that's rounded on one side. And that's how you can make it have dimension. Okay, this also has a mast that's coming out of it. So it is connected up here to... A long piece of wood we're gonna kind of draw that in and then bring it down at an angle down here and put the bottom and this bottom will be setting in the boat okay and then the other sail is quite a bit larger it disappears behind this guy but it's right here and it's sort of at an angle that's a little different it's going to come up a little taller, so draw a straightish kind of line up here and then make it kind of dimensional. This doesn't have to be super perfect, but and then we're going to come down here. And this one goes below that one. It comes right behind this mast here and it's straight across the bottom like this. Now, I am drawing a little bit darker so that you all can see, but you don't need to draw as dark as I'm drawing. Then come back in, and I'm going to, for my own visual sake, get rid of these crossover lines. And then this actually has a rope that goes down here, and then there's another rope that goes across. And actually, I don't like that turn up that I did. Okay, so we got our two masts, two sails next to each other, and we're going to show this dimension by um, shading. And I'm going to kind of bring this out just a little bit more. I want to really give that impression that the wind is tilting this sail sideways a little. Okay, all right, and then this has a little line here where there's another um, part of the mass that holds that sail. And straight across here to a point just past the end of that sail, we're going to make the top of the boat and it's going to kind of come to an abrupt end here. Make the round end of our boat. Boy, I can really hear that construction work. <laughs> And our boat is actually not as long as that mast piece. I'm sure there are more proper names. I'm not a sailor, so I don't know all the proper names for the parts of the boat. And then here, our water is going to kind of cut the boat. Okay. 
um, on this part of the boat, right just past this, right below, we have this part of the boat that's like the place where they keep the supplies and stuff like that. And like I say, I don't know <laughs> the names of these parts. I'm sure somebody who's been sailing might know the correct names for these parts of the boat. But I do not come from a sailing family. So I do not know. And this part kind of tapers off there like this, okay? The rest of this underneath will be shadowed pretty well. So now we have our basic structure for our picture. Um, so let's begin with our pastels. You can use all the colors of the rainbow. I'm not going to use all these colors. I will prim primarily use these blues, white, black, and a little bit of brown. Maybe a little bit of these yellowish colors, okay? And I also have pulled out myself some Q-tips to blend with. And I also have a selection of other colors that I really like from my other kit. You may not have all these colors, but you should be able to do um, blending to create these colors uh, using the basic set, okay? And also you can use crown and just color it with crown if you'd like, or marker. It really doesn't matter. It's really just about the experience. All right, so my first thing that I want to do is lay down some white. So the way that we're going to do our sky is we're going to come really close down here close to the houses and we're just going to lay in and I'm going to clean this off a little bit I like to clean my pastels off and almost if on cue we have a garbage man picking up the garbage right now there's just not really ever a perfect time to do a video <laughs> so I'm going to go for it you know we have to kind of make things work in this time that we're in right all right so we're gonna we're gonna give a surface to our paper. We're starting. I, I like to tell my students, and you guys will remember this from doing our Gabrielle Munter landscapes, that we like to work from light to dark. I think that that's the best way to approach pastel because if you start with really darks, so you have to be really careful about touching them with um, darker colors. And I always tell my kids to save the dark colors for last because they smear up your picture. And you can use the side of your pastel and just lay in some white. I'm just trying to get like a, the texture of the white and then we're going to blend some beautiful blue colors from behind it. Now I have some tape on my table so it's making some shapes on my paper. So be sure your surface is super flat. And if it's not, you know, just move it around while you're working and make sure you don't have any extra things. You don't have to go as heavy at the top. Now, I'm going to leave all that dust on my paper. I want to tell you, don't get tempted to swipe across your paper because you'll smear. And all that stuff that's laying on the surface, we actually want it there right now. So I'm going to take my finger, a fairly clean finger, and I'm going to give it a little... A little smooth out here just a little bit next to those things that you could use a q-tip right here too if you wanted to I'm just gonna make sure that I get a good surface and I'm using a circular motion with my finger to kind of almost scrub the pastel into the paper okay doesn't have to be super super careful but around that little spot right next to your images that you have. I want it to be nice and smooth because I want that to be a nice gradient when we put our blues in. Okay, so now we've got our white in. And we've rubbed it around. And we're gonna start by taking the lightest color blue that you have. Uh, I have this color, it's almost like a, it's almost teal. I'm gonna start from the top and I'm just gonna do some swipes down watching out for 
irregularities on your table surface because this will it really will show now. Focusing the heaviest part at the top and lightly moving down towards the bottom. We do want that stuff to be blue right by the shoreline, but we don't want it to be super dark. Okay, so I'll just get it down here just a little. And in between our sails a little bit. We don't want to get our sails too too messy because those will end up being white in this picture. Okay, so we've got that. Now we want to take our next color of blue, which I have this. Uh, it's called turquoise blue, and I'm going to put it up here. You could use just blue instead of turquoise blue. And I'm going to lay in some darker tones at the top here. You don't want to scrub it with the smaller ones. I wish this I had this color in a bigger one because it does tend to leave scrapes on the paper, which sometimes is cool, but in this one we want it, I want to make a nice smooth application. All right, so just kind of moving it down like this. And then the, the last thing we're going to do is hit it one more time with blue, but darker blue. So we're going to go for that really intense blue. We're going to mostly focus it at the top of the image and on the sides, not too much down here. And now we get to do the fun part, which is to sort of scrub it in. So I'm going to take my fingers, and I'm actually going to start with the lightest part first. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to do circular motions to sort of blend this so it's really soft. I don't want to go too high yet because I don't want the bottom of this to be too dark. So start down here. We're going to go right up to the house. It's okay if you get a little bit on the house because we're going to go over that. We don't want to get it too dark there, but it's okay to hit right next to it so it looks really continuous. And all we're doing is just mostly using that white and then mixing that blue in it to create a sort of sky gradient. Now I'm using all fours, and I'm going to dip into that darker color now and do some scrubbing motions in a circle. Circles are good because it comes from all angles, if you can tell. And it really makes this sort of ethereal, dreamy sky. Now, I want to tell you, this is a little bit long video. I'm going to try to do it fast, fast, but I always say that, and it takes me a lot longer than I think. But you can always stop the video if I'm going too fast. And if you're bored or you need to take a break, then just turn the video off and come back to it when you're ready to work on it again. Okay? No pressure. And that's kind of one of the good things about having the videos is recorded and not doing live videos that you can come and you can kind of do your thing. Now, I've gotten this down a little bit farther than I really wanted to, but I wanted to, to blend it. What's the matter, kitty cat? My cat is talking to me. All right, now I'm going to show you the trick here. Before we keep blending, uh, I want to go ahead and put some more whites down in here and blend that back up, okay? Because I went down just a little bit farther than I wanted to. Don't swipe. Don't even blow. Because it gets dust in your eye and on your friends and on your mom's table. You need to take your paper and just give it a tap. And all of that loose dust will go off without smearing your picture, okay? So now let's grab our white. You don't have to do this. I'm just doing it because I'm picky. I'm going to put just a little bit more white down here and um, then blend up again. Just to make that nice, smooth surface, okay? So I've, I've wiped my hand on my, you can see my rag is really blue. My hand is still blue, you see, but it doesn't have powder on it, so it's okay. It'll work. And then we're going to just kind of take our fingers and move in an upward direction, taking that white that we just laid down and sort of pushing it back up.
to smooth that transition, that gradient up to dark. And if you really want it to be dramatic, you could even go again with the darker blue at the very tippy top. And I guess I could show you what that would be like. But I'm pretty happy with it right now. I think that's pretty good for right now. Okay, wiping my hand again. Okay, get that stuff off of you. It's okay if it's stained a little, but we want to make sure we're not transferring dust like you see here. It's really easy to do. I'm going to take my Q-tip and I'm going to come in here. These Q-tips do pick up quite a bit of pastel. So when you're scrubbing, be careful. And I'm going to get those little sections. The rest of it I'm like mostly okay with. But you see this cotton actually does pick up some of that chalk. We don't want it to pick up too much. So I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to try to scrub that back in. We don't want to lift it too much. The chalk's just sort of set on the surface of your paper. And it's not until we set it at the end that it stays in place. Okay, all right, I'm gonna pick my paper up, give it a little shake. All right, we're in good shape, we got our sky done. Now it's time to lay in those darks. And I wanna give a little tip to you when we're working. I like to work from light to dark, and then I like to work from top to bottom. And the reason that we do that, and sometimes we turn the paper around, uh, you might need to turn your paper upside down to do certain things, but the the arm, your arm right here, gets smeared across the picture. So if you start laying in darks here and then you're working on the sky again, you're going to get it all over the place. So my tip is dark to light with the colors and then top to bottom as you work. Okay, so now we're going to hit, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do lay in some whites on the house. So the, the house is like white with blue shading. So the roofs we can leave alone. We won't need to put white there, but we're gonna go in and lay a, just a foundation of white on the places where we're gonna turn it blue. And on the this thing right here, this lighthouse, okay? Then I'm gonna hit the sod because that's the brightest light. Anywhere where you want it to be super vibrant, you kind of need to lay down a barrier of white chalk when you're working this way. Okay, so I'm gonna set that down. And then now we're gonna lay in just the lightest blue. Wish I had an even lighter blue. But I'm gonna take this this blue. This is called uh, blue turquoise. This is a semi-hard pastel. And it's one out of my set over here. Okay, so we're just gonna hit some blues on here. We may even take a darker blue, and I'm just touching it with just little touches, okay? All you're doing is just putting a little pigment on there so that you can mix it around. And the places that we put it will be the places where we have shadow. So we might put some up here. Just a little. So that's what we're doing. And then we're going to take our Q-tip. I actually don't like it as much as I like the finger. Using my finger tool. And I don't think this blue is going to be dark enough. I might have to use the darker blue. Okay. Might need just a little bit more true blue in there. So let's hit that with a little more true blue. I'm going to hit it right on this edge. Just do some little pats with it. Because we really do want to show that it, it's a, a shadow. Still light enough to tell that, it, that the thing is actually white. It can be kind of tricky sometimes. But you're just mixing. You're really just mixing on your paper. Okay, now... I'm going to use my finger and just really tiny little motions in there. Yeah, that helped a little bit. So now we can see that we have a little bit of a shadow. I'm 
And I might come in here and do a little mixing there. Okay. Pretty good. And then we need a little bit of dark at the top here. Just to reaffirm our shadow. Okay, we laid our houses in. Now we're going to take um, our black. Oh, actually, I might take a dark, dark, dark blue and do these windows real quick. Just a little rectangle to show some windows in your buildings. This one might have three. Maybe there's a door here. And this one, maybe it has like a little attic window. Okay, well, that's pretty good. I'm gonna hit this with white again, right here next to this. We might have to come in with a little tiny pen after and kind of detail that a little bit. All right, right now I'm gonna go ahead and shake this off. I'm gonna turn it. Giving it a little knock. Now our loose stuff is off, and we've got the impression of our of our place. Now I didn't do this little side. Let me just touch it with my blue finger. That's good. Okay, now let's do some black. This is scary because it's pretty early in the picture, but it is in the middle, and we need to do that as we move down. So it's it's okay. So we're gonna do this little top part. We're gonna try to find a really pointed edge, and actually. I don't know. I might have to make an edge on this. Let me see if I can. Sometimes you have to kind of make a little point on your pastel. And we're just going to hit this little guy up here. Try to be slow and careful. Just do the top of your lighthouse. And then there's a little band that goes right here. And then we're going to hit our roof. These may end up being kind of brownish by the end. I don't know. We'll see. It's going to go right up next to this. And then this roof here. Just fill in your little roof rectangle. It might be good to have a blend, a little tiny pointy blender. Nice, and then there's the side of that roof, okay? Now, our land part, it sort of comes here, so we're going to kind of go right above that mark that we made and kind of meet it. And some of the parts of this will start with a line, and then we're going to kind of make some of it a little bit bigger. And you can do yours kind of how you want. We we'll want thin lines and fat lines going all the way to the side of this lighthouse. And then over here, maybe this piece goes down behind that sail. And then maybe this part goes up. And I've changed the line a little bit there. This is this is the sort of shadow silhouette created by the dunes in the picture. All right, now I'm going to hit it with some dark green. In a couple spots, just because it's not really black. It's really more like dark brown, dark green. Just hit it in a few places. OK, 
Okay. All right. Now I'm going to hit some browns in there. Just a few spots. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring this forward like this and drop it so that I don't go through my sky with black, okay? Now, let's be careful. This is going to get a little cray-cray. Let's take our, our, our Q-tip, and you can even take some of this fuzz off. Sometimes that helps. So you're making a smaller nib. You want to softly define that hill. And it does, you know, it creates quite a bit of drama in this image because it's so stark against that light blue. But we really want to scrub that into the paper to really create this nice smooth surface. It's okay if it's a little bit messy. While I'm at it, I might actually go in here and do a little scrub scrub on this roof. Okay, all right, and then let's give this a little tap forward like this. Try to keep that from getting smeared on our sky. And now we're ready to lay in some more white. So be sure that you get your rag out and that you wipe your hands good as you've worked with the darker color. And now we're gonna lay in more whites because this is sand. So what we're gonna do is create the surface again. Using our white, I'm going to turn my picture a little bit. And we're just going to cozy right up to that. Even if it gets a little bit, a little bit uh, muddy, try not to smear it too much. And right now, the point is just to get some surface. Some of that texture from that chalk. We're going to leave all that powder on there right now because we're going to use it. We're going to use it to our advantage. Don't wipe it off. And this gets tricky. It gets tricky up here by this black, but do your best. Just kind of come in there. And create some powdery texture with the white on there. And it's okay if it gets a little smoky. All right, we got our white laid down. Now we're going to come in with some warmer tones so this sort of pale yellow I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna create some texture this is gonna be our sand and so that white that we laid down is really helping us to create value and then some of our things might come up a little like this Let's see here, we've got, maybe this comes up here. And then the other thing that we're gonna do is create some like swooping motions. So right up into that, we're gonna bring our pastel right up into that black to create some swoops like banks where the snow, or snow, where the sand drifts up into the dune. We're down from the dune either way. All right. So now we've laid in our whites. Let's go ahead and put in some, some deeper tones right at the edge of the water where it meets the water. We're going to just put in just a few deeper tones, and this will create interest in the piece and also depth because it's gonna show the part of the sand that's a little bit wet. So that's what we're using it for, is showing 
that this is part of the sand that is maybe moist from the water hitting it. Okay, now I'm gonna come back in with that light yellow that I used and we're gonna mix it. We, we don't want it to be so stark. We don't want it to be like necessarily orange. Just wanna give that hint. So we're gonna scrub it pretty good. And as you can see, we're mixing, we're, we're literally mixing the paint, paint quote pastel, on the surface of the paper. And that's the one thing about pastels a lot of people don't know is that you gotta work it. You gotta work it in. Scrub it in. Make it do what you want it to do. And then we've created a few little shadows there where the sand meets the top of that grassy part. And then maybe there's maybe there's one over here. Okay, it's okay for the color to blend just a little bit. Now we're going to go ahead and knock this off. We've got a pretty good picture so far. It looks pretty good. Okay, now the thing that I want to do, I think I'm going to leave the sailboat for last. I'm going to go ahead and wipe my hands again. Well, I don't know. Maybe we want to lay the darks in on there. Got a toss up, maybe. Okay, let's go ahead and do the bottom of the sailboat. So this part, we're going to take our white again. Make sure that it's clean. If it's really muddy and messy, you can just wipe it on a towel or napkin to clean it up a little bit. And we're going to hit the bottom of the boat and create that surface with that chalk again. Okay, and then this part of the boat is also super bright at least on this this front section it's super bright it turns sort of a dusty brown in the back okay maybe we'll just hit this right there too and these sails will be all white as well but we're not to those point yet, that point yet I kind of almost want to wait till the very end for that just because of them being so tricky um, okay so we've got our whites laid in let's grab some of our um, brown and we're going to lay the brown top of the boat in here. We're just going to leave that white set for a minute, okay? We'll come back to it. We're just laying in the background colors, the basic background colors for these things. So this is kind of the mid-ground. It's not actually the lightest color. And then there's just a little bit of a shadow there. And then all of this stuff here, you can do the mast. We can do the mast here on the edge. And all of this in here is actually pretty dark. And it's going to end up reading almost black. All right, let's take our lighter. <coughs> this is like a, they call it a sanguine, sort of like a, umber color, a raw, or a sienna, burnt sienna, really is really what it is more like. We're gonna hit those highlights right on that deck of that boat, right up at the edge. And then there's just the slightest little highlight here. Okay. Now let's get our really pale yellow and we're going to kind of build in to here. Sort of smearing that line between that dark color and the light color. And then we also have it here too. Okay. And we are going to take our dark blue and we're going to do some touches like we did with the lighthouse where we're just adding a little bit of blue powder in there to create a sort of shadowy area. You could even draw a, a line right under that and take a clean finger, 
try not to get that brown mixed in there like I just did. And then I'm going to hit this front of this boat again with white just to kind of pop it out again. Because I got a little bit messy. All right. All right, then we're going to take our black and we're going to add it to this brown here to create our deepest values. right up under that sail and on the back side of this area. This is pretty, pretty dark in here. Okay, now let's give it a little tap. Well, before I tap it, let me rub this in a little bit. just to do a little blending. Okay, that's great. Let's give it a little tap forward this time. Looking good. Okay, I'm gonna take my little finger and I'm gonna rub right here. And I'm gonna rub this black and blend it in just a little bit. What we're doing is sort of creating those shadows and then we need to do the mast with some yellows and oranges there and then I'm gonna wipe my finger off first I gotta check my finger to make sure I'm not gonna mess it up okay a little tap forward again kind of smooth this out a little bit Okay, there's our ship, it's our boat. It's a little bit messy, but we're gonna clean it up when we do our water and add our water in. Okay, so now let's do, let's go ahead and do our white of our sails. So you're just gonna fill this in, laying a surface, just like we always do. Creating a surface where we're gonna float some blues for shading. Make sure your pastel is clean. Before you do this part, we're going to leave our little line between. You know, you could go straight in here if you wanted and just draw with the pastel. But with this one, it's I felt like it needed a little bit of mapping out. I'm not that good where I can just draw a sailboat. I have to make sure I like the look of it before I put the pastel on. But you could totally just be wild, wild maniac and... Get in there and just draw it. <clears throat> okay, so we've laid our surface down. We're going to leave that chalk right there on the surface, my friends. And now we're going to start laying in some shades of blue. And I'm going to go for this guy. And we're going to kind of hit the spot right here and we're going to go super gentle. We're just going to do like a little circle that kind of goes up and it kind of goes right here. This is where the shadow is going to be on that. And then this one is going to have some shading right at the edge. And we're going to do kind of the middle spot right here. Okay, and then he has just a little on the lower part there. And this one, most of the shading is there is where we drew it, but there's a little piece that should be shaded there. Okay, so now that we've got that the shadows laid in, let's wash our hands again. Wipe our hands on our rag and take our finger. I'm just going to give a little bit of a blend. Now we don't want to go too far out of where we were because we will change the shape of the shadow. So don't don't get too too wiggly with that part. And then this our finger here. 
stay right where we drew that blue. Watching out for that berm. I got a little bit messy there, but I'm going to wipe my finger off. Okay, I like the colors of that sail. All right, now let's go ahead and give this a tap. We're going to hit that mast again with the brown to bring it back to life. This mast here, we actually see the whole way down. Okay. Now, what I like to do is take a little bit of black. Let's go ahead and tap this out. Did blow it a little bit. All right, and then let's redraw those marks. To show our sailboat, I, I'm not sure how I feel about it. I almost feel like maybe that was a mistake, but. Let's just go with it this time. We want to be able to see our work. You could come in with blue and... Well, that's what I'll do. Take this blue. Go over that black just tiny, tiny, tiny. Just soften. And then I'm going to give it a tap. <clears throat> I'm going to come in with white, and I'm going to do just the softest, tiniest little blending right at the edge. I think that makes it look a little bit better. I don't like it quite so stark. Okay, so... I'm to be careful to make sure my head's not getting on the camera. Sorry. All right. And that softens up that line a little bit. It seems a little stark. Okay, I'm going to clean my pastel so I don't make it bigger than it needs to be. And I'm going to finish this last side right here. Getting right in there and getting those details just... The tiniest blending. Nice. Okay. Uh, I'm going to hit this with a bright color to show where the sun is hitting the mass. So I'm going to hit maybe a little white. I've turned my picture just a slightly. So what we're doing is showing the highlight on that mass a little bit. Where the sun hits it. Okay, let's give our image a tap. I had to blow that because I got a little bit messy there. So I'm going to clean my pastel and I'm going to go in there. No worries. I'm going to whiten that right back up. And anywhere you've made a mistake, you can scrub out parts that get muddy if you, if you work at it. You can scrub it out. Okay. Looking pretty good. Tap, tap. Oh, yeah, I'll get tired of that probably, but it does help you keep your picture nicer. All right, I'm going to go in with whites now. I'm going to hit some highlights. Uh, we've laid those yellows in, and then we're going to move into our last part, which is the water. But here, I want to actually show that bright sand. Kind of 
coming right through here. We're going to hit and scrub back in where we've gotten a little bit money. And we're going to make those dunes and right in front of the house be very bright. And over here, the sun is shining brightly. Don't need the whole thing to be covered, just so we're going to hit some spots. And I did want to lay in a few um, shadows with blue, where the sand would turn blue because of the shadow of it. Okay, so let's take our lightest blue. Well, no, let's take our. I'm trying. I'm in debate. Thinking maybe this this color of blue, and then we're gonna hit some areas just on the side where the the shadows would be under these. to show some shading. Okay, we're getting there. I told you this is kind of a long one. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. Could be happier, but I, the way that I positioned it, it's a little bit hard to get in there. Okay, last part, this is really fun. We're gonna take our big blue and we're gonna cover the entire space not hitting our boat <laughs> up to the water carefully give a whole you're going to cover the whole surface of this area which will be careful about things underneath your board because layers of paper will end up showing if you can see my textures are showing so we're what we're doing is layering giving a surface to begin we don't want to mess up our picture too much, but we want to hit just the parts that are going to be with the water. I do tend to be a little bit more intense underneath the boat, but for right now, we're going. I'm going to show you how to do this really quick. I'm going to use my rag. Yesterday, when I was working on this picture, I had a spot. Can you see my spot? And then I'm going to fold my rag or my paper towel into kind of like a little ball. And then I'm going to use that ball to, to blend in a circular motion and get this covered. So that we get a good surface of blue underneath on our paper. We're creating that surface of the ocean. Right now, circular motions are good. Don't go too close up your shoreline without being careful and you might want to use your finger on that part see I left a little white space there because you need to have some real detailed movements there but you can see how quickly we can lay in a whole ocean area with our little rag okay all right now we're gonna take what's laying on the surface with our fingers and we're gonna get in there and just hit that and you could use your Q-tip too. Maybe that would be better. Yeah, that might be better. Don't smear that. There's some dust up there. Just leave it there. We don't want to smear our picture. All right, we've got our ocean laid in. Now it's time to do the fun stuff, my favorite part. Okay, so first of all, we're going to take our white, and we're going to create the lighter parts of our water. And now is where the painterly motions come in. So we're going to start right by the shore is 
really light. We're going to leave kind of some areas of darker value. And we're just going to come in here with some strikey sort of motions to create movement in our piece. We're going to mostly keep our strokes going from left to right. We're not wiggling or doing too much of that right now. We're going to leave this dark spot right there, but we're going to make it light by the shore. Oh, that's starting to look good already. Okay. I hope you're as excited as me. This is my favorite part. This is where it really gets fun. We start to see our image come together. So we're going to create some really brilliant whites there. I am getting some spots where my paper is showing through, so I'm going to come back and hit over those. Right now, we're real, what we're really creating, and I mean, you could do some sort of humps if you wanted. We're creating sort of a light blue by mixing it. Now, if you want it to remain white, you might have to start with dark blue and not smear it in. But I kind of liked the way that it looked. I'm going to hit this just a few spots here, but not crazy. And then I'm going to take this blue, this dark blue, and I'm going to come in here and create some real darks. Now let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and tap our paper. I, I kind of like that stuff sitting on the surface for a while, but around our boat we wouldn't be careful. All right, so let's go ahead and lay in some pretty good values here right up next to the boat the water is coming right up covering the side of the boat and then it's almost like a straight line and then it goes up into the curve so now let's get in here and get some even darker tones laid in Maybe some wavy parts can happen over here. Works down here, maybe. You can trail your blue off a little. So start dark and move light. Good. Okay, so finish up your ocean and then you'll be ready to sign your name. Very pretty. Now, if you'd like to go in and smear this around, I kind of like the, the chalkiness of it, so I think I'm going to leave mine. Let's go ahead and knock off our final dusting. And there is our sea scene. And I'll put my name down here, AD 2020.
I hope you've enjoyed this. It's been fun. Um, and, you know, you can continue to work on it, go back in and do more details. But sometimes it's fun just to have a good time and see what happens. I hope you've enjoyed today. I've enjoyed being with you again. Have a great day. And don't, for don't forget to create every single day. Bye for now, everybody.